This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hello, my name is Denise Renner, and I am so thankful that you are with me today because I want to talk to you about something that applies to all of us, and that is the power within us. I'm talking about the greater one. First John says in chapter four that greater is he that's in me, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And this greater one, the Holy Spirit, he expresses himself through our life in so many powerful ways. And today I want to talk about how he overcomes the enemy inside of us by the love of God, which is inside of us. And before I begin our teaching, I just want to thank you so much for watching and I want to hear from you. We are there to pray for you. So please call us. We're waiting for your call, for, for your prayer request, for your need, so that we can agree with you. And let us know if God's doing a miracle in your life. We want to know that because we want to rejoice with you. I want to give you a testimony because God is moving in these programs because he's not limited to a camera or to this technology because the Holy Spirit, when we connect with him by faith and we receive what it is he wants to give us, he manifests himself. So I want to read to you. The headache is gone. That's that's one. I received my healing of my stomach track. The Lord spoke to me that he was healing. And then Denise said that someone's stomach was being healed. I grabbed this word and God has healed me. And one other person wrote, God healed my back. I can play hockey. Glory to God. You know, God, when he touches us, he he. He, I mean, he gives this miracle working power, but God, when he touches us, just like that, that person that said they now can play hockey, God wants to give our life back to us. Can you imagine how much problems it causes you in the daytime when you have stomach problems? I know someone who's had migraine headaches. It was almost paralyzing. They couldn't drive their eyes. They couldn't see. That's so evil. But the power of God is greater. And I just want to encourage you as on this program, as, as we bring this word, that you take a hold of the miracle working power of God. Well, I want to talk to you about the love of God that's inside of you by the Holy Ghost, and that is the greater one. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So when you got born again, the love of God, the very love of God, oh God came inside of us, not to just be there for a certain moment or a month or a week or a year, but until we see Jesus, that love of God is moving there. It's there. It's for us. It's for us to draw from, and it's powerful. When I was born again, when you were born again, the love of God came inside of you. And you know, one of the signs of being born again is that we can love people. I remember when I got born again, it's like I loved everybody. I apologized to my mother. I didn't want to argue with her anymore. Why? Because I was filled with the love of God. And that's what happened to you when you were born again. 
The Bible says that he who does not know God does not love or he who does not love does not know God for God is love. If, if we know him, his love manifests through our life. And the Bible says that no greater love is this than a man lay down his life for his friends. Well, you know that God laid down his life for us. That was that great love. And that great love that laid down his life for us is the same love that lives inside of you. Is that, is that amazing? Now, we may never have, uh, you know, like laid our life down for somebody, our physical life. But maybe, maybe you get, gave up judgment or you gave up criticizing or, or you gave up jealousy because you love somebody. You didn't want to hang on to your own selfish ways, our own selfish ways. And we said, you know what? I've got the love of God inside of me and I am drawing from that love of God right now. And whoever that person is, I forgive them right now. I forgive them for what they've done to me, how they've talked to me, how they've treated me. You know what? That is nothing less than the love of God. That's the greater one inside of you expressing himself through the love of God. And the love of God is conquering. It's powerful. The love of God can conquer jealousy. The love of God can conquer criticism. The love of God, if we allow it, can conquer fear. Oh, I'm getting excited. How can a person say, that I love this brother and then stand in judgment or criticism or gossip about him. Now, the Bible says, and I'm going to read it to you. It's in 1 John. It's in 1 John and it's chapter 4 and it's verse 20. And this verse has always like corrected me. So, and the, and the word of God is our guide. The word of God is our help. The word of God is our instruction. The Bible says it's a lamp unto our feet. Well, you don't need a lamp if it's all light outside. You need a lamp when it's dark. And when trials or temptations come to us or situations that we don't know how to deal with, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It, the power of this word comes and it shines a light right on that path. You may be saying, I don't know what to do. But when we take a hold of the word of God, it comes with its light, with its power, and it shines on our path. And we know which way to go and we know what next step to take. I'm talking to somebody right now. I know because you're in a situation and you don't know what to do. And I understand situations can present themselves where you're just like, man, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. And how in the world am I going to forgive this person? They've done this so many times to me. How am I going to forgive them again? But the love of God is in you by the Holy Ghost. And the love of God in you has conquering power. Now look at our instruction in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. And it says, if someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Well, that's a very big warning for us that the love of God is in us. And so if we say we love God, then we must love our brother. That gives us direct, uh, correct direction, instruction, because our flesh 
wants to give ourselves excuses and say, but I can't do this or, or, uh, you know, they've done this to me so many times. I'm so tired of this. I don't deserve this. All that kind of talk. But look what the word said. It said, if we say that we love God, whom we haven't seen, how can we not love our brother who we have seen? I know it's strong words, but it gives us instruction. It gives us correction. Jesus said that two great commandments, you know, he said these were the two greatest commandments. He said to love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, that is instruction for us to draw upon the love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost what we, when we got born again. And it acknowledges the greater one on the inside. Because the greater one is going to express himself through the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. This is, you know, God, he raised the level on love. Peter said to Jesus, he said, should I forgive my brother, you know, seven times a day? Because the Hebrews, they, they had a law that you have to forgive someone three times a day, at least three times a day. So uh, Peter, he doubled it and added one. He thought that that was just really amazing. And Jesus said, no, I don't say to you seven times. I say to you 70 times seven, 490 times. Jesus raised the bar on the love level. He said, if you have to forgive them 490 times a day, this is my level of love. And that's the, the love that you have on the inside of you by the Holy Ghost. Now, here is great and magnificent news. The love of God is in you ready to operate ready to forgive, ready to stop gossiping, ready to believe the best, ready to have patience, ready to stop criticizing. The love of God is right there, active, ready, as we acknowledge that power. You know, you have to acknowledge that power, and we acknowledge it by faith. God, I, I don't feel your love. I don't feel this love for this person, but I believe what I'm being told right now. You know, many years ago, I heard a preacher and he was telling me the word of God. And he said, you are righteous. Jesus made you righteous. Well, I listened to that CD three or four times and argued with it the whole time because I said, but you don't know me. I'm not pleasing to God. I'm not his favorite. How could I be righteous? I, I, I have this sin or that sin or that thought. How could I be called the righteousness of God? Well, it took me a decision to say, God, I agree with you instead of my own thoughts. In fact, God asked me, he said, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe you? Are you going to believe my word? And friend, I'm saying that to you right now. Are you going to believe you that you can't acknowledge this love that's inside of you by the Holy Ghost and take this word that I'm speaking to you as truth? Or are you going to believe your own mind? Jesus said that he Place this love inside of you. And it's for us to say, God, I agree with your word. And I agree that that love that's inside of me is ready to operate right now. You know, everybody knows 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Some people even have it at their wedding. And, and I want you to see there's something amazing about it. 
because it names, it names all the attributes of love. It's so amazing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. L love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked, thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And then look at the next part. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. If we apply love, Love never fails. And the Bible goes on to say it, that, the, that there's no law against love. They can't create a law against love. And when we draw upon the love of God that's in our heart by the Holy Ghost, it can't fail. In fact, it conquers. You know, I... I we used to have a garden when I was a little girl and my mom or my dad, they would get out on that piece of ground. And, and of course there was weeds out there, you know, in the springtime and, and, uh, there were, and the ground was hard. And so they had to get, it was called a, a tiller and they had to get this tiller out there and they had to press it into the dirt and they had to dig up all the weeds and they had to tear up and plow up that hard ground and then make it smooth so it was ready for the seed. Well, that's what love does. Love goes in there just like that tiller and it throws out hate. It throws out jealousy. It throws out criticism. It throws out gossip. It throws out fear. Love conquers it's the most powerful thing on the earth is love. Love is the most powerful thing on the earth. Hate is not the most powerful thing on the earth. Love is the most powerful thing on the earth. When Jesus gave his life, that was the greatest act of love ever. And that love that brought redemption and salvation and deliverance and, and delivered us from the judgment and the wrath of God and gave us an entrance into heaven. That is the greatest thing on this earth. And that love has been placed on the inside of you and on the inside of me. And that love is conquering love. Nothing is more powerful than that love. But you and I, we've just got to acknowledge it. We've just got to say, God, God, I agree with you. God, I agree that my situation, though it's very difficult and complicated, <laughs> that you are greater. You are greater. And you said in your word that greater is he that's in me. You know, you should say that about yourself right now. You should just do that along with me right now. Just say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Than any pressure, than any confusion, than any fear, than any doubt that any pain, that the greater one is greater in me than he that's in the world. And I have the love of God in me. And the greater one is going to express his power right now through me, through the love of God. I am going to forgive. I am going to overlook. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to believe the best. I'm not going to say that they shouldn't treat me that way. Like, like I'm the, like, you know, I have my rights. Actually, that's pride. Love, love says, I forgive. Love says, I let it go. 
And when we allow the love of God to operate in our life, we're acknowledging the greater one. The greater one. His very presence. His presence is inside of you. His presence is inside of me. It is impossible for you to be separated from him. Nothing can separate you, him from you from his love. You know that. It says that in Romans chapter 8. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor powers, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing. That love of God is operating you in you right now. We have to acknowledge it by faith. You have to say, God, I acknowledge it by faith. I take I take this by faith. Let, let's pray together right now. Father, we come before you right now. Lord, I don't know what situations that my friends are facing or the pressure or the doubt or the fear or some, someone or something coming against them or their family, or their loved one, or their husband, or their wife, or their child. But Jesus, your word says that greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. We humble ourselves right now, Lord, before your word and before the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. And we acknowledge by our own will that the greater one is inside of us. He's greater than anything that tries to come against us. And we choose to operate out of this love in our heart to express this power this greater one that's inside of us. We thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence that's coming on my friends right now. And we let go, those who have hurt us, or we let go of doubt or fear, and we acknowledge you, the greater one. He's the greater one, not the enemy, not the offense, not the fear, not the pain, but the greater one is greater. The greater one is greater than the pain that's in your body right now. Oh, just receive his power right now. Do you have pain in your body? If you have pain in your chest right now, or you're having trouble breathing, just acknowledge the greater one, that he conquered that sickness. He conquered it. He punished it in hell, and it doesn't belong on your body. Just take a deep breath and receive that power, that healing power from him. That's the presence of the greater one. Oh, he'd never leave you nor forsake you, no matter what you're going through. He's right there. Isaiah 41 says that he holds us by our right hand. His right hand of righteousness. It says that he holds us by our right hand. You can't escape his presence. Oh, friend, receive from him right now. Someone right now is being healed of a headache. I mean, it's going from you right now. Lord, we thank you for your healing power. You're so gracious and merciful to us, to visit us. We give you all the praise and we give you all of the glory. God's touching somebody in your stomach right now. You've had pain in your stomach and you didn't even know why. That pain is leaving your body right now. 
We give you praise, Father. All the praise and all the glory goes to you and you alone. In the precious and magnificent name of Jesus, amen. Oh, it's been my privilege, my pleasure to be with you. Please let me hear from you. Let me hear your prayer requests. Let me hear your praise reports, what God is doing in your life. I want to rejoice with you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Women are powerful and very influential, but what kind of power and influence they have depends on what has happened inside their hearts. The Bible tells us of women like Jezebel, a woman who had no touch of God in her heart and used her influence to destroy her husband, her sons, and her nation. But the Bible also gives examples of women who were supportive, godly, helpful, and delivering. In this amazing 10-part series, 10 Powerful Women with Rick and Denise Renner, you will learn about an unnamed woman who changed history, a woman God radically changed, a woman who saved her nation, a woman who was delivered of demons by Jesus, a woman who gave her living room to Jesus, a woman preacher in the New Testament. Whether you are a man or a woman, this powerful series will help you embrace who God wants you to be and is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we are also offering you the book, All the Women of the Bible. The world needs men and women to embrace their God-given destiny and to make a difference in the lives of those around them. This book is filled with examples of 400 named and unnamed women of the Bible, and it is amazing. We know it will be a blessing to you. This insightful book by Herbert Lockyer can be yours for just $19. Don't miss this special offer, this series, 10 Powerful Women, and the book, All the Women of the Bible. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners because of your support that we can help people fighting addictions get their families and their lives back. All around the world, there is a huge drug crisis. Maybe you know someone who has suffered or is suffering from alcohol and drug addictions. The cycle of addiction is a terrible thing. Because of the generous support of our partners, we have been able to join with several Christian rehab centers where men and women can be trained to reintegrate into the workplace, receive the medical help they need, and have a support system in place so they're not isolated and alone. Because of your generous support, we have seen people with hepatitis C get well, many who lost their family relationships get back together, and many others who were on heroin, cocaine, and other drugs receive freedom and become complete people again. This has been made possible through partners who support our work. Please call or go online to renew.org. Because of your support, we are able to make a huge difference in people's lives. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.